There is a general view by negotiations that governments at the state and federal level are exceedingly uncomfortable with the report and are working hard to undermine it as well as change the narrative. We sincerely hope that this is not true. But if it is, such plans will fail. A few days ago, we were made aware of the unwholesome and cowardly attacks and warnings of doom on victims, activists, and lawyers of the NSAS movement. We condemn most violently the violent and bloody attack on Kansi Ibe, which took place in the evening of Sunday, November 21, 2021. Kansi was also a victim of the army and police brutality at the Lucky Throw Gate last year. Her attack last Sunday was accompanied by threats of further mayhem by her assailants against other entrance activists. On Monday, the 22nd of November 2021, Dabira Oluwa also received a threat dropped on her car, warning that she was next on the line to be attacked. We also note the threat of assassination against the persons of Barrister Olu, Ade Berua, Wiseman Kule, and Barrister Faroti. Years ago, we are told by a prominent Nigerian statesman, Nebelaru Wale Shoenka, that Nigeria's federal government was having a nest of killers. We hope that the same thing will not be said about the government of Lagos State. The prospect of a legitimately constituted government being involved in state sanctioned violent attacks and killings of innocent citizens is too gruesome and frightening to contemplate. The state government, Babaji, the state government, Babaji Bensonwele, has a duty to investigate the possible involvement of people close to him in the violence being perpetrated against Lagosians. One of these people, who is said to be an aide to the governor, is said to be the coordinator of the Defend Lagos Coalition, a body that is being, that is being fingered for the attack on Kansi, as well as threats and other activists in the state. We want to believe that these unwholesome speculations on the person of the governor are not true. Daniel lies his credibility going forward. The credibility of the President Muhammad Bari led government is equally at stake over this matter. The totally dismissive response of the Minister of Information, Mr. Wai Mohammed, to the Lagos State Panel's report is typical of his well known combative position of see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil, especially when it comes to the tragic events of October 20th, 2020. It is time to let government functionaries like Lai Mohammed know that they are not more patriotic than any Nigerian. Neither do they love this country more. We stand by the state judicial panel of inquiry on restitution for victims of SARS-related abuses and other matters report as released. Because it is a bold and objective reflection of the malfeasance that has characterized the behavior of our security forces over the years. Our demands are simple. A thorough investigation into the attack on Kamsi Ibe, as well as the threats on Dabri, Olua, and other and others. We expect expedited prosecution of the perpetrators once they are unmasked. We expect an immediate prosecution of individuals in benefit for human rights abuses and murder that and the murders that happened on October 20th, 2020. That all those involved in the sordid and criminal events of October 20th, 2020 2021 should be punished in accordance with the provision of the law. This would include the army, police, government personnel, as well as personnel of the Lekki Constitution Company. Corporate sanctions, if possible, should also be considered. We have done and we have we have done actions here, protest in defense of our security people that are being killed and innocent people that are being killed in this country. So it is not as if we have any angst against our security forces. But the truth must be told that what happened on the 20th of, of October last year must not be forgotten. 
and it is something, and that is the essence of that report, so that what happened will not be allowed to repeat itself. And we are more worried that rather than learn lessons, that certain elements within the state, I'm talking of Lagos state, are now so angry that Nigerians, you know, we are, I mean, we are able to come forward to talk about their terrible, tragic experiences that they went through last year. And so instead of looking for ways to compensate these people, to make them recommit themselves again to the oneness of this country, thugs, killers, and all manners of undesirable elements are being sent after these people and other activists who are speaking out about the evil that has befallen that befell our country last year. And this must not be allowed to go unchallenged. And that is why we're here. We want to tell them that this country belongs to all of us and that we have a right to dissent. We have a right, it's a right that is given to us by the constitution of this of this country. It is even a bad thing when a citizen misbehaves. But when a government lacks morality, when a government does not have any ethical foundation on which it is going to carry out its activities like a government, then all of us are endangered. So this is a message hopefully to the local state go government. We don't want to believe that he has, you know, people within his administration that are targeting innocent Nigerians. We want to believe that he's too much of a fine gentleman. So he has to prove to us he has to institute an investigation into the attack on people who you know, were involved in the protest of last year. Let me just end up by saying, end by saying that the report of the panel was something that took all of us by surprise. It was bold. It was forthright. It was objective. It was all Nigerian. Because we have seen how some of these panel cities go in this country. So we are pleasantly surprised that in that panel we have people with character. People who have belief and faith in their country. Who believed, who placed a higher premium on humanity rather than the exigencies of government, whether state or federal. And so we praise them and commend them for what they did. And to tell all Nigerians that we stand by the positions of and the recommendations of that report and that the government should do the needful and the needful is to ensure that what happened last year will not happen again that the culture of impunity must stop and the only way that will stop is for them to hack in to the recommendations of the panel thank There's you very nothing much. that has happened over the last 20 years that is completely different from the daily attacks and trampling on democratic rights killings by government agents and soldiers called kill and go as at that time, you know, there's nothing different that is happening, that, that we are seeing now that is different from what has happened in the past. And what this means really is that um, at this stage, we need to begin to think of what needs to be done. Before I go into that, let me first express on behalf of the youth rights campaign, our solidarity and sympathy, you know, to come with Camp Ibe, you know, he was, he was attacked. Uh, where I come from, there is a proverb that says that the witch cried yesterday and a child has died today. You know, people said that nobody died. You know, but you now have a prominent NSAS protester who gave uh, evidence at the panel, attacked in a circumstance, in a situation that completely showed that she was trapped and that there are, you know, gun and non gunmen now in Lagos State on the payroll. And I don't agree that the Lagos State governance is a gentleman. You know, uh, during the NSAS protest, during the occupation at Alausa, uh, there, were, there was a first attempt, you know, by Turks to disperse the protest. I was there. I could have been killed as well because we didn't know it was a threat. We just saw young people with cutlasses and coal, you know, coming at us. I, was, I, I sat down with my papers and leaflet until they began to attack people before we now realized that uh, something was happening. Some of us played a role in ensuring that those who were apprehended were not killed so that there could be an evidence that that happened. Those young men, I see how their pictures, yeah. about three or four, were handed over to the police who were stationed 
at the Lagos State Council for seven. This is one year after. Where are they? They have not, there's no evidence that they have been prosecuted or taken to court. And it's very clear that it's these same people who are still on the prowl. So the question of whether somebody is a gentleman or not even arise, we are dealing with individuals and a class of people who are prepared to kill you know, for the purpose of assuring that this system of fraud and exploitation continues. And that is why for all of us who are protesting and fighting for end to for an end to police brutality, we need to begin to realize that why fighting for that is also very important to begin to mobilize for a revolutionary struggle to transform the society. If you look at the papers all over the past 48 hours, it's very clear that the government is planning even more attacks. The IMF is saying that we must remove fair subsidy and distribute 5,000 naira to Nigerians as transport allowance per month. We must remove subsidy on the tariff. It means that by next year, the hardship we feel currently is even going to even much more. And what that means is that you are going to need the police and the army that is prepared to subdue and intimidate people into submission. And that is the origin and the root of police brutality. It's a system that is based on exploitation. And what we need to do to end it is to end the system itself all, I mean, all together. That's why we need to begin to march on the street and build a proper political alternative for the socialist Nigeria. Thank you. The lies and the yellow of bullets, and of course, the documentary. And remember that the council was here. And I bring back to Kansi. Barbara wasn't able to make it because she had to hurriedly appear before the panel. In fact, the city was not planned for that day, but when possibly they heard that we were about to do something to divert the attention of the people, they now said they wanted to sit. And we ended that day by saying that the exit movement will not end until justice is served. And so to have been saved. And that um, we know by the actions of this government, they are elevating the answers uh, movement to a bigger movement in the Nigerian space. Um, I think we are seeing them sinking and sinking the more into the abyss. But we never expected them to descend so low to the level of attacking people that have provided evidence in a, at the judicial panel that was set up rightfully by the government itself. Please, let us remember this sequence that the ISIS protest was very peaceful. And that it was actually government that initially introduced non-state violence into the movement. Please, we have to be very accurate each time we are discussing this. And just like the Soroto said, the pictures of the use carry cutlasses to possibly now down protesters in Lhasa are everywhere. Till today, nothing has happened. Nothing has happened to those that went to Abu and burn over 50 or close to 100 cars of traders. Who possibly some of them doesn't even have anything to do with the protest. Nothing has happened to those that came out of mad government SUVs in broad daylight in Abuja and were chasing people. Now, when the government began to introduce non-state violence in the democratic setting, then there's a problem. And the whole world is watching. Come back to what happened in Lekki. So much has been said about that. But I'll just say a little bit about Kamsi. When Lekki happened, I watched just my brother here. Some of us, we are convinced from the one that people died and they were shooting. And there is nothing this government can do to change that. It is a hard fact that can never, ever be eroded. Right? The people who are victims were so scared to speak. They couldn't even come out. Actually, you can see. Even 
easy for us to get some dead bodies. And they talk. They don't even know. You know, when you're pregnant, you expect women to talk from a firm position, right? You expect women to have better, you know, they have better intelligence than the rest of them. You, you, you're talking, you don't even have basic information about how people are getting even from what charities, how you have to even again, pay the police, how no charities wouldn't want to even release the bodies. How will they, how will their families come out? It was Kansi and Dabla that were instrumental to building the confidence level of other victims of lucky incident that we were able to get some of the reports and evidences that we have today. That's a fact. And those young women are still in course, very focused, and testified at the panel. When we have said families um, didn't come out, I don't believe the panel will go. That could be even less a without without bodies. If we are so many of these two. There are the things that they take away the body and go and bury them. Yes, yes, yes. Now, why women say there is no massacre because there are no families? Now we have bodies. But let me only tell you this. We all know that this man is living in an alternative universe. There are actually families. At our press briefing here on October 30, the families came. There are families. Now, that time, I didn't respond to that woman's statement, but I think enough is enough. I think one woman should stop in, uh, insulting our collective intelligence as Nigerians. One woman should stop attacking our democracy. And one woman must know that he is not greater the Nigeria's democracy. Let me come to that. Number one, even the federal government appointed them said we wait for that to be. Which if you know government hierarchy means this is the official government presidency statement. Now, when Mohammed joined his own president and then came out with his own report. After the government said we are waiting for a white, uh, a, a, whatever they call it, a white paper. Number two, why Mohammed made a very serious pronouncement that people seems not to take notice of? He said that the entire process of setting up the judicial panel was a waste of tax, uh, taxpayers' money. Which means, is also, that to me is an affront of our democracy, is an affront of our constitution, is an affront on the principle of human rights for which the Nigerian state is established. And I think we should not take that lightly. Yes, this happened in the United States, but that is also a total affront of the government and people of Lagos State. Because for any institution democratic to survive, there must be justice and there must be democratic rights. And when such a question, a question, there are systems to find out how to achieve that justice. And even though some of us did not believe in that panel, it was the democratic and constitutional right of the Lagos State government to establish that with the Lagos State people's money because people are killed in the territory of the, of the Lagos State government. Now, Mohammed does not have the right or the locals to pass that verdict on the Lagos State government and the Lagos State people. And that's why I said that beyond his propaganda job, I see Lion Mohammed currently as a threat to our democracy. And the earliest this government can do something about him, the better for this government and for our democracy. On the issue of today, this has been all done. We need protection for all these women, all these youths that have come out. 
Uganda were alone. Witness list must be given protection. One year, over one year after, we are still seeing the same thing happening in the polity. It would seem that the government has not learned any lesson so far. But at Spaces for Change, something we've noticed since the NSAS protest is that rather than go back into their rooms and examine their actions, the government has instead stepped up their game in repressing the rights of citizens. They've embarked on a very vicious digital repression of civil liberties. And of course, that's understandable, knowing that what happened on October 20th, 2020, and across other parts of the country, would not have been, I mean, would not have been, um, you, you know, possible, made aware to citizens the magnitude of the state's interference in the protest, if not for capture on camera and on social media. So that even before now, even before the ban of Twitter, we already predicted that there would be a ban of Twitter, and it happened. So we have seen an increased attack on digital rights. We have also seen an increased attack on frontliners of the NSAS protest, especially journalists and young people who are bold enough to stand up to injustice. We've also seen a new trend. It's not a new trend per se, but it's currently on the rise, called Eli Mohammed, and that's misinformation and distorting of facts. It will seem that Lai Mohammed is living up to the sound of his name in our ears. Maybe there, there was a time it was funny and ridiculous to us. Maybe in 2016, we would hear him talk and we would just laugh and wonder how such an advanced man would say something like that. But at this point, it's becoming ridiculous and an insult to the sensibilities of all Nigerians. So we would advise Lai Mohammed to take a step back and review. He's supposed to be the Minister of Information and not misinformation. At this part, he's playing the other part more than he's playing his original you know, portfolio. We'd also like to extend our solidarity to members of the Lagos State Ensas Judicial Panel. Commend them for standing up for in the face of in the face of um, attacks, intimidations, and whatnot from states, both state and non-state actors. And we would always be here to offer that support and offer whatever is needed to make sure that the truth is not buried. One advice for the Lagos State Government and the, federal, and the federal government and all other state governments across the country is that this moment presents a defining moment, especially for the Lagos State Government to redeem itself. We understand that the government must be embarrassed, the federal and state government must be embarrassed at the progress of event so far and how the truth has become naked despite the attempt to bury it. But nevertheless, they have erred. But this moment presents a fine opportunity for them to redeem themselves. The Lagos State Government, the Nigerian Security Forces, the federal government must not only be known for the use of brutal and lethal force against citizens, 